Hey everybody, my name is Tim Bryan. I like to make videos on sports analytics. Um, if you've ever wanted to know the answer to the question of whether or not ESPN fantasy football projections are accurate or not, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that in an automated way today in this video. So um, what I have here is what will be the final product of our project today. So um, this is my fantasy football league. Uh, on the x-axis we have the player projected score and on the y-axis we have the actual score and it's color-coded by teams. I've just changed the team names uh, for, not, for obvious reasons, but um, this is, uh, you know, like I said, actual ESPN data from my league, and I'll show you an easy way to do, to pull that data using Python. So <clears throat> it won't take too many lines of code. It'll be pretty easy here. So um, <clears throat> we're going to import a few things. The first thing we want to import is Pandas, a uh, pretty basic data science library. Let me zoom in here for everybody. Um, and next we're going to want to, uh, import some things from a config file. So if you're following along with me, what I want you to do is create a file called config.py and put three variables in it. So we're going to, the first one is going to be league ID, and we're going to set that equal to, um, our ESPN league ID. The other two variables are our, uh, cookie variables. So, um, I'll, I'll explain how to get all three of these real quick. So let's log in. Make sure you're logged into your ESPN um, Fantasy Football League. And then to get the league ID, it's pretty simple. You're going to go into your URL. And in the URL, there's a parameter where it says league ID equals, and it's a six-digit number. So you're going to want to grab that six-digit number and then just put it in your config file. <clears throat> Next, uh, we want to get two cookie elements. So uh, what we're going to do, uh, let me do that more slowly. We're going to be logged into our Fantasy Football League page here. Uh, right click. This works in any browser, by the way, <clears throat> as long as it's not Internet Explorer or something really old. Um, just right click anywhere in the white space or anywhere on the page, I should say, and hit Inspect Element. <clears throat> so um, what a cookie is, if you don't know, is when you log into a website or even sometimes when you don't log in, um, <clears throat> the website stores information about you whether it's uh, you know, your login details so they know what you're allowed to be viewing, what kind of data you're allowed to be viewing, or maybe it's uh, you know, demographic information or location. So <clears throat> we're going to go to the storage tab in this uh, DevTools, and we're going to look at what ESPN.com is storing about us. And the two things we want are SWID and ESPN underscore S2. So uh, I'm not going to show you mine for security purposes, but... You just scroll down to where those are in the browser here um, and copy the value and then paste it into the config.py file. <clears throat> so that'll allow us to access our fantasy football data through the API. Um, <clears throat> next, uh, I'll, I'll come back to this, but we're just going to use Seaborn and Matplotlib to visualize our data. Um, but you don't have to visualize the data if you want to just get to a point where you have the data and then you, you can export it to a CSV or an Excel sheet or something and then um, visualize or analyze the data that way. That's, that's also an option. So um, <clears throat> this ESPN FF player data pi file is something that I've made to make it a lot easier for you to grab your data from the ESPN API. So <clears throat> you don't have to understand this code. Feel free to parse through it and, and take a look if you want. But all we're going to do is we're going to import that file as FF, which is just an abbreviation. So, um, <clears throat> and I'll point out when we use this throughout the throughout the project here. So, uh, let's define some Python variables. We'll keep the name the same for simplicity's sake, but we're gonna call our league ID our league ID, and then keep the cookie parameters the same as we are as we have them in the config file. Um, next, we're just gonna define what year we're looking to pull. So in this case, let's just pull 2022. Um, <clears throat> next, we will uh, initialize an empty pandas data frame. And then this is where the magic happens. So um, we're going to loop through a range. In this case, the range is one through seven. Um, <clears throat> six weeks of fantasy football have gone by so far. And if you don't know, for the Python uh, range function, it will go from the first number you specify, one in this case, to um, 
one minus the last number. So this is actually looping through one through six, weeks one through six. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's the data we're pulling is weeks one through six. So we'll get the full player league data for weeks one through six from my fantasy football league or your fantasy football league if you're following along. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a league variable and we're going to use this load league function from um, the Python script that we imported above. So uh, this function takes five parameters. The first is our league ID. The second is what year we're worried about. The third is what week we're worried about. And since we're in a for loop, it's going gonna, it's gonna to loop through this six times. So it's going to first put one as the value for week and then two, three, four, and so on. Um, the last things we need are the SWID and the ESPN S2, which are our cookie variables. I've already talked about that. <clears throat> All right, next we're going to create a temporary data frame, which is going to be equal to our load player data function. This is the second function from the Python script I created. Um, this actually takes two parameters now. It's kind of an upgrade from what I've done before. The first parameter is the league variable, which we just created. And then the second variable is what week we're concerned about. Again, we're going to loop through week six times. So um, <clears throat> we're going to set our data frame. We've initialized it as an empty data frame up here. We're going to set it equal to uh, append the temporary data frame and drop the index. So that just means um, reset the numbering each time. But for each week, we're going to um, put the data for, the, for that week in the data frame move on to the next week, and then just keep putting it on there until it ends the loop. And here's the final product. So you can see uh, the columns we have are what week the uh, fantasy player played, uh, their name, their score, uh, the ESPN projected score, and then this fan player fantasy team. So uh, every team in your league has an ID and, um, you know, it could be one through 10, or maybe if you've had people drop in and out, it could be, you know, it could be any number. And then um, the last column is what roster slot that player was played in for that week. So uh, for example, if that, if that player was benched, it'll tell the, it, it'll tell you if they're benched or not. It's not just going to say uh, like Derek Carr, for example, it's not just going to say QB. If he was played in the bench, if he was left on the bench for the week, uh, or maybe if he was in a flex or something, then it'll say what slot he was in that week. So next we're going to um, <clears throat> load the team names. So this function, this is our third and final function from the Python scripts is loading the team names. It takes five, it actually takes six uh, parameters. So the first is our existing data frame, which we have up here. Um, next, we're just gonna uh, do, use our usual cookie variables and then the year and the week. So we've defined those above and I've renamed the team names and the player names but when you run that function you get the team name and the the player name so like whatever the user uh, has named their given their name as for the ESPN account those that'll be right here so and I, I no, you know that's that's about it if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to just take this data and run you could do something like um, pd dot to CSV and then run, um, yes, sorry, df.2csv and then we'll call it data.csv. So when I run this, you'll see I've got the CSV here and this is all, all the data. If you wanted to take this, run it with uh, an Excel or something, you could do that. But um, <clears throat> if you wanted to continue on with the Python, feel free to do so. so what I'm going to do here is just filter down to week six, our last week. Um, and then all we're going to do is color each team and, and then we're going to plot it using Seaborn. So this is the final product. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Uh, I, I make videos like this pretty often. And if you've got any, you know, any improvements that can be made to this code, feel free to let me know. I'll include the GitHub. Um, somebody actually requested that I make a discord to go over uh, the video, the code I go over in this, these videos. So I'll post a link to that as well if you want to talk about um, sports analytics or maybe you have a question on running the code, uh, feel free to join that chat and we can uh, we can figure it out together. So thanks for watching.